how to use a 3D uh, camera to create an interior perspective or 3D view of the inside of our model. So to do that, I'm just going to jump to our View tab. And the View tab is located right here along the top. We'll click on View. And I can come over here to my 3D view. And when I click on that to expand that option, I have three options to work with. Now, we're concerned with the camera. But looking forward, you can see we have the option for 3D walkthrough. So this will be something we do a little bit later. But let's go ahead and select this camera. So I'm going to select my camera. And when you do so, you'll notice it's attached right there to the crosshair or my cursor right there when I move my mouse. Now this allows me to precisely place this camera wherever I need to within my model. Now when you're placing this camera, just think of a couple of things. Your first click is going to be where your camera is sitting. The center of the tripod, right where you're going to be shooting your scene. And then you're going to drag your mouse and then you're going to click again and that's going to determine the distance. So let's see what happens. So, in our design here, I know in our final product, I really want to create a nice shot of this area with a sloped ceiling and maybe some exposed beams or something. So, I'm going to go ahead and set up a view for that. So, as I mentioned, the first click here is going to be where we place our camera. Then I'm just going to move my mouse. And when I do that, you'll notice these three lines. And that's going to determine what all is going to be visible in my scene. So, anything that fits in between left and right extreme lines is going to be in my view. So if I did a view this way, you could see those walls that fit into those extremes are going to be there. If I moved it this way, it'll be more of the center wall. If I moved it this way, it'll be more of the side wall in that corner. So we're going to do more this area here. Boom. And what happens is we automatically generate a nice 3D view. So I can use, if I click out here in blank space, you'll see this, the that blue uh, border deactivated but if that ever happens just simply click on that border and it activate again and you can use these grips to simply resize your scene here to only include the building elements you want to include within your scene pretty simple stuff pretty straightforward but pretty handy sometimes it's those simple things that uh, really can make a big difference now you can also adjust your visibility style here so we can right now we're in hidden line but I can go back to my visual style here and we can go to a shaded if you wanted to. I can click it again. Maybe we can go to a more consistent color. We can go to realistic. And we can even play around with ray trace, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Uh, that's more of your rendering and physical based rendering things. Where we're really trying to emulate uh, reality. But for now, I'm just going to go back to hidden line. But we have that option. And we'll be playing with that later. But another important thing with this particular view is you'll notice when we had this model set up, and especially with a view like this, I want to bring in um, nature. I want, to, I want to be able to see trees. And right now, I can't see too far. So what we need to do is we need to go back and, uh, to our camera, and we need to adjust the, the depth, the field depth, the, the view depth there. So if I were to try to do that now, and I were to simply just go to first floor plan, you'll notice that camera that we had placed has disappeared. It's like, oh, no, how the heck do I get my camera back? Well, let's jump back to that view we created. It was, in our case, it's 3D View 2. And I can actually click my box as long as I select that border, then jump back to level 1. You'll notice my camera's in place. Now I can actually come here and I can actually start making adjustments. So if I wanted to include those trees, I can grab and drag this field of vision and make sure that the trees are included in it at this time. So now I can go back to that same 3D view and you'll notice. I've got the trees from the outside. So not only can we adjust what's going on on the inside of our scene and can kind of control how we frame the scene, but we can also control some of the things that are in it. If we want to bring nature in, we can do so by adjusting how far out our camera's viewing. Now we set up a view, made some quick adjustments. Let's go ahead and name this view really quick. So if you come back to our project browser, our bold 3D view 2, I'm just going to simply right click on it and I'm just going to go to rename, say rename. And when we do that, we'll get a little window of that that appears here. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this one. So we can call this one uh, Entertainment Room. Entertainment Room View. So I'm going to say OK. And now we've got the view in there. So we've created a view, made adjustments, and also named this view. There's another property within this view that can really affect the outcome of the scene you're trying to create. So if I were to select on this, I can actually mess around with the properties within this particular view. So you can see my far clip, 
it was very much similar to what we did when we were adjusting that camera. So right now it's set to 164 uh, feet. So from where my camera is set, I can see out 164 feet. Now if I wanted to adjust that, I could. Let's say we did, oh, we did 20 feet, or we'll say 25 feet. Watch what happens to this view. It automatically adjusts. And really, you can see here, it's 25 feet from the point of the camera. So the end of this line is probably 25 feet. And anything we can't see is basically blocked out there. So I'm going to go ahead back and adjust that to 165 feet. Should be able to see our tree again. And we're back in business. But that's another way that we can actually adjust uh, the depth there and see what's going on inside of our scene. Another setting in here that's going to be really important is our eye level. So we can adjust our eye level here. So right now it's set to about 5 foot 6 inches. But what if I wanted to set this to be maybe more of a, let's say, a worm's eye view or something. We'll say from a, a, a foot off the ground. It's a pretty big worm, but we'll say one foot off the ground. You can see that is automatically adjusted, and we can get a pretty good view of that. And we know we're in business because we could see our perspective lines are actually shooting back down. But for this view, I want to assume that we're going to go off the average person's height, eye level. So five foot six was a good dimension to work with. So I'll put it right back. So you could see, now you can actually see, ah, oh, it feels a little bit more eye level than the other one did. So those are some interesting parameters that can really help uh, kind of tailor this scene into something you want. Simple topics, really cool, but that's how you work with it. And that's the 3D camera. So now that we have that view set up, named it you've seen how we can make changes and it automatically updates let's go ahead and set up a 3d walkthrough really quick and i'll show you how that works before we move on to the next steps of our project so i'll meet you in the next clip where we'll work with the 3d walk